I don't know. Steve, Canadian Sasquatch, coming at you with another me Monday. That's right. And we're going back to reviewing some meat and talking about your guys' questions. Uh, first, the uh, Canadian Sasquatch Mead Challenge, it, it is a go. So uh, get making those uh, hydro mills because you're running out of time already. That's right. We only have four and a half months to make the mead and get it shipped to me so I can ship them all back out. So uh, hydro mills, make them, make them tasty. Uh, Meatology is still on sale and via Amazon. It'll probably always be on sale via Amazon because there's no point in me taking it down. But on sale, Meatology. Uh, also, Canadian Sasquatch shirts. Make me be happy. There's a, a variety of colors there. Uh, both men and women's styles t-shirts in case you're want a different style and yeah i think that's all i got so uh, let's get into this week's mead that's right we're going back to meridian hive canned mead they got another one this is actually their original draft mead it is uh discovery which is a great name for it because it is an orange blossom traditional so it's just straight up honey water yeast uh plus nutrients and blah 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 um it is off dry again these guys uh make sure they uh where are you there you can see that off dry is highlighted right there ingredients And 6.5% ABV. The only thing missing is a, uh, a date. There's something on the bottom of the can, but where is it? There it is. I don't know what those mean. I know it's got something to do with the bottling date, but it doesn't look like an actual date to me. So who knows? Anyways, let's go ahead and crack this puppy open pour it into the glass and as usual from these guys crystal clear I can see the camera through it and you guys can probably see my face if the glass wasn't uh, Getting condensation all over it. But yeah, that is crystal clear. A nice light straw color, which orange blossom traditional, that's exactly what I would expect from it. So speaking of hydromel, this right here. 6.5%. Hydromel right here. I'm glad these guys aren't in the competition though. Well, they could be. So let's get an aroma off this. Oh, you get that orange blossom honey just right there on the nose. And it's so powerful because of the carbonation it brings it up to the nose so much quicker than just a still mead. And it does have that, like a uh, mead uh, aroma, or you know, it's got that fermentation going on in there. So uh, let's get a taste on this. Cheers, everybody. All right. So, uh, it's well known that I prefer my meads sweet. People would even call my level of sweetness cloying, but there's a little bit of objectiveness there. Um, so this is off dry, so it's not dry, but it's also not sweet. Mm. 
and it's it's okay. It's it's because it's a little bit on the drier side. It's not to my palate, but it, I can tell that it's well done. That orange blossom uh, honey flavor is in there. Um, I'm getting like zero off flavors from it. Yeah, that's just very well done. Um, so if you don't know what an orange blossom honey tastes like, um, it's very faint, uh, citrus, a little orangey. Uh, you can get other citrus uh, flavored honeys like I've uh, enjoyed a jug of uh, grapefruit honey. So orange blossom, grapefruit blossom. Uh, it was similar to orange blossom. It just has a little bit more of that uh, grapefruit tart sourness to it when you're eating it. And it was really good. Um, so yeah, it, it just has that faint citrus flavor and aroma. Like if you took an orange peel and just twisted it and it shot its uh, oils into the air, that's similar to what you get out of these. But yeah, there, there's no off flavors. Um, this is exactly what I would expect from a, a traditional. Um, it is carbonated. So that helps with the mouthfeel a little bit. That makes it a little bit fuller mouthfeel. Uh, not quite full bodied. I would say it's on the low end of medium bodied. Uh, Thanks to the carbonation, it would probably be a little bit less than that if it wasn't for the carbonation. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, but there's the uh, Discovery by Meridian Hive. And they, they nailed it. Thumbs up for these guys again. Um, like I said, it's, I prefer the sweet. This one's not. This one's off dry. So spin that can around so you can see. They're right there in the middle, off dry. But I'm still enjoying this. Um, yeah, that's very tasty. <clears throat> so let's, uh, Talk about a subject that quite a few of you uh, bring out in different questions, but it's all related to how do you deal with a bad mead? There's, so if it's bad, like it's gone bad, or if it's got off flavors, or if it's just running around the house breaking stuff type of bad, how to deal with that. Firstly, if you have the kind of mead where it's running around the house breaking stuff, um, I think you might want to call it Ghostbusters to deal with that instead, because uh, mead really should not be running around the house like that. that that's, that's a bad mead. Uh, but if you've got like off flavors or <clears throat> just something in there that's just doesn't taste right. There's, depending on what it is, there's a variety of things. Uh, one of the questions that popped up is yeasty flavors. Um, so if your meat has a lot of yeasty flavors to it, depending on the yeast, depending on how much yeast, uh, depending on when you're sampling it, will all have those yeasty flavors to it. Like if you're tasting it during primary fermentation, then yeah, it's going to be a little yeasty because all the yeast are in the, the meat there doing their thing. So you get a swig full of yeast. Um, but if it's past that, then what it could be is you still have a lot of yeast in there in secondary. So yeah, so if, if, it, if you think it should be done fermenting and it still has a yeasty flavor, we might want to try doing it as cold crashing it. Because that will, as we talked about previously, is all the yeast will fall down and then you can rack off of it, off the yeast cake, and it should be cl cleaner and clearer since all everything's uh, 
fall out of suspension. Another reason why you might have yeasty flavor even after you've done that is because the yeast have imparted their yeast flavors. Uh, one of the reasons can be uh, you actually didn't pitch enough yeast. Uh, so under pitching yeast, uh, the bigger the batch, the higher the gravity, the more yeast you need. Uh, for you beer brewers out there, you know about making starters and stuff to make sure you have uh, enough yeast cell count to ferment through the beer that you're making. It's the same thing in uh, making meads or wines or whatever. It's the bigger the batch, the higher the gravity, the more you need. Quite often, we don't really need to worry too much about it because we use the sachets of uh, the wine yeasts, and those have a lot of yeast in those little freeze-dried pouches of the yeast. Um, so we don't have to worry about it too much. But those are usually only good for like four, three to four gallons at about a 1.1 1 .1, uh, gravity. As soon as you get higher than that or uh, more uh, volume-wise, then you'd probably want to toss in a second packet. Um, I quite often will use two packets of yeast for a five gallon batch at 1.1 or higher. Another uh, reason you might have those yeasty flavors is if you leave it on the yeast cake for too long, uh, then you'll get the yeast autolyzing at the bottom of the, so you got the yeast cake down here and the yeast down here are dying and exploding from the pressure and all that of what's on top of them. And that will cause uh, the off flavors of yeast and other things as well. Um, I had a grapefruit uh, mead that I made and I bottle conditioned it and it had the yeast flavor in it. Part of it was because I used too much yeast when I uh, bottle conditioned. So there was like a huge layer on the bottom of the bottle. Uh, another reason was uh, I did leave it on the yeast cake. So even the stuff that I didn't bottle condition had yeasty flavor. Uh, but the good thing is, is sometimes that yeast flavor will age out. Uh, for that grapefruit, it took like one and a half to two years though. So it can take a lot of time for that flavor to age out, but it will eventually age out. So other things, you can get other off flavors uh, in the mead. Oxidization uh, kind of tastes like a soggy cardboard. Uh, some of those flavors will not age out. Uh, so the best thing that you can do with that is like either dump it, which we don't want to do because we put a lot of effort into making the mead, uh, but you can cook with them. So you just turn it into like a marinade or if you need to deglaze a pan after searing some meat in there or you're making a stew, just pour some of that in there. Um, the off flavors will dissipate through that, through the cooking process, um, as long as you don't use too much of it, like don't use a whole bottle. Like we're talking about like 750 mil bottle or even a 375 mil bottle for like one pan of sauce or whatever. But you can use it to cook with. Quite often, that's another thing that I do is cook with the meads. Um, other off flavors uh, can be disguised. So if you're like getting ready to bottle and you realize there's just something off in the meat and you don't know what it is. Um, what you might want to think about doing is, depending on what kind of it, meat it is, if it's like a mellow mel, uh, you can add more fruit to it. Just make it a complete fruit bomb. Uh, let it soak on the fruit for a while uh, to impart all those other flavors from the fruit to cover up the uh, off flavors. Um, again, another thing you could do is age it on wood. Uh, different woods will uh, help cover up different off flavors. Um, so yeah, it's depending on what the issue is, there might be hope for it, there might not be hope for it. Uh, another thing is if you have a bad mead, um, it's just really bad and no hope and you don't want to cook with it, um, if you're in New Zealand, what you can do 
and this is specific to New Zealand, is you can distill it. Distilling is legal in New Zealand. The rest of the world, not so much. So if you're not in New Zealand, don't, don't distill. Uh, but that's the thing that you can do is, uh, and I have actually sampled, I don't know, what would it be called? Brandy? Is brandy distilled wine? Yeah. So a brandy that is made from mead. And it was not bad. It was... Uh, it was